Well, having all the pictures up is a way of doing that. So not everything to you is this traumatizing, sad, oh, my life sucks moment. It's like, hey, that was a good day, and I remember that. And hey, this was cool. And oh, yeah, there's my friend, and he's a good friend. And hey, I, my friend, yeah, you know what? I haven't thought about him for a while. I'm going to go write him an email. <laughs> hey, I remember this day, and do you? And that was cool, and we, we ran into the water. I went swimming, and it was cold. I was freezing my nards off, and, you know, your kids were there, and my kids were there, and they were playing together, and do you remember what they were playing? Yeah, they were playing a soccer game, and wasn't that awesome? Yeah, we all went for fish and chips later, and, yeah, the wife wanted to be playful and fun. She squirted a tube of ketchup into, into your face. We all had a great laugh, and the story goes on and on. Everything's done from a picture. I mean, look at the experience you get out of the picture. So surround yourself with pictures. Make your life at least appear to be somewhat interesting. And if they're not your pictures, because whatever, look at someone else's pictures, posters, uh, anything you find interesting. If you like fishing, get some pictures of fish on the wall or some anglers out there with some water. And Don't look at a blank wall all day. It's boring. It's going to make you like not want to do anything. Just wait for the day to pass and hopefully end soon, the whole thing. So, yeah. I'm always trying to figure out or think of things that would better myself, which means I'm, at times, trying to find my own cure. What's going to make me feel better? Uh doctor's not going to do it. He's only got one prescription, the pill. Uh, go to your doctor. How's he going to help you? You're depressed. You got 14 minutes with him. He's going to tell you, what, what's he going to tell you in 14 minutes that's going to make you like come out of there with a feeling that you're going to get better and tomorrow's going to be a better day. He's not going to do anything for you. He's going to tell you, here's a new drug or how's the last drug doing for you? Oh, I'm not sleeping well or whatever. It's making me sick. Oh, well, why don't we try something else? Uh, try something else. It's kind of a whole thing. It's like all hit and miss. Uh, he hasn't had a brain injury. He doesn't know exactly what you're going through. He only really knows that what he's read and what he's been taught and what he's supposed to tell you is, here's a pill to fix you. I mean, that's what, oh, that's what I became a doctor for. I want to give you an answer for any one of your problems. It'd be inconceivable that they could sit there before you and offer you no help. Then what would be the point of going seeing your doctor? Uh, you're expecting an answer. You have a bunch of questions. And he's paid a lot of money for his expertise to give you an answer, cure you. So, yeah, that's his job. Cure you. Well, he can cure a broken leg. You can offer, you know, medicine for aches and pains and cuts and antibiotics for uh, how you're feeling sick or penicillin for some infection or whatever. But when he's faced with a, a brain injury, uh, it's all guessing, man. He doesn't have an answer for you. He's going by a book or his colleagues. Hey, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, well, I, I gave this this brand of medication to XYZ person, and he, he seems to be better, or at least he's sleeping better. He went back to work, by the way. Of course, when I saw him, uh, he wouldn't even give me a smile. His eyes were dead and dragged his feet around, but he said he was happy that he could go back to work, and his wife was very cool that the idea that he wouldn't sit in bed all day. So... Yeah, he left the house, so the wife was excited that he wasn't stuck there all day or whatever, but the actual fact you're looking at him, he's like a walking dead thing. The pill has, like, knocked out his brain and doesn't have any more issues to deal with, and, hey, cool, we cured him. <laughs> yeah, we cured him. Or we we made him, like, less visible, or he, he can't complain anymore because he's always drugged out, or he doesn't even know what to complain about anymore because can't think, doesn't even know what's going on, he's useless, he's 
living a robot's life or something stupid. What the problem is, is for people who have brain injuries, is your brain is searching for an answer to get fixed. It's like trying to reattach itself to any number of new circuits or old circuits. It, they all exist. They've just been cut. So it'll be overwhelmed in trying to connect its billion connections to reestablish who you once were if you, you know, talking to people and conversation, the rules of it and how you learned it and the lessons you learned in the past and things that you could say or should have said or what you did say and what responses you got and people hated you or they, they liked you or uh, whatever, all communication skills. I mean, those aren't learned from one in one day. They were learn from a baby you're born and right away you're engaged in it and you learn it as you go along and you have you have the uh, the great idea back then that you have nothing to compare about compared to so it's all new so you're not thinking at that point that something's missing or you forgot something everything to you is brand new so here's your brain like trying to connect everywhere so what you get quite often in an unmedicated mind is a mass of confusion because uh, you're being bombarded with a billion things at the same time and it causes you uh, anxiety and your inability to go to sleep and it affects your sex drive it, it affects uh, everything you're emotional you're weird uh, you don't know how you're supposed to run respond to anything uh, when somebody jokes at you and you're having to now uh, think about what he's joking about uh, what's funny why is it funny uh, is it something i should be laughing about uh, all this shit like goes through your mind at any one time uh what you ate for breakfast what you want to eat for lunch what's for dinner what kind of food you like to eat uh, when's the last time you ate a lobster? When's the last time you ate a pancake? When's the last time you saw an orange? Well, what what day is it? What time is it? Uh, uh, geez, I read a book, good book there before. I can't read now. I'm too angry. I'm upset. My daughter is bothering me. Uh, uh, I want to go watch a television show. I want to listen to some music. I want to watch both and listen at the same time. I don't want to do either one. I want it quiet. I want it, uh, hey, the weather's nice outside. Look at it, it's sunny, it's raining, it's cold. I wish someone would turn on the, uh, the heat. Uh, there's some mess over there. Who threw that stuff over there? That's bothering me. I can't do it. Hey, Martha, go fix that or clean that up. Or uh, I don't want to do it. I don't feel like it. Uh, I want to go sit on the couch. I don't want to go sit on the couch. I want to go to bed. I want to go to bed either. I want to go to sleep. No, I don't want to go to sleep. I, I don't know what I want to do. Let me, let me think about it for a second. Uh... You know, I want to move the furniture. I don't want to move the furniture. Uh, when's the last time I went to work? How do I feel? I feel sick. I'm happy. All this shit. I can go on here forever. And you got the gist of it. Think of any single thought and just keep adding any possible thought possible in addition to it. And then just keep thinking about a different thought and a different thought every single second that you exist or live. You can see that as there's no focus to any of it, and it's just a wandering brain, endlessly just engaged in in things to do, because it it's lost its ability to govern itself, because a part of it is missing or cut off or dead or whatever. 